Thanks for joining me for MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're talking about the accuracy associated with BLISC welding. In previous episodes, we talked about the linear friction welding of BLISCs. BLISCs are bladed discs where we're welding an individual blade to a disc up to 20 times in order to make a full assembly. These are typically made out of titanium. They can be maybe four feet in diameter on the large side, uh, and they're used as either the front fan or part of the compressor section uh, of an aircraft engine. Now, the real trick to this is the tolerances that we need to achieve. We're being asked to hold 0.05 millimeters true position of a blade relative to the hub. So 0.05 millimeters is a fraction of the diameter of a human hair. And we talk about true position, we need to be able to hold the blade tolerance within six degrees of freedom. So six degrees of freedom uh, are the upset direction, that's an easy one. You have the direction of oscillation of the blade. You have the side to side motion of the blade, which is not part of the process. I also have a rotational axis that I have to control an angular axis, and an angular axis in this direction. Those are the six degrees of freedom that we need to hold in order to be able to achieve a 0.05 millimeter true position. And the trick to this is we're doing all this with tooling. And the tooling needs to only take up a fraction of the tolerance that we need to achieve from the process standpoint. So these blades can be long, Again, we're, we're welding parts that, that might end up in a full diameter of, of four feet, uh, and they have a high degree of twist. So in order to make a weld uh, where I'm oscillating the tool in this direction and forging in this direction, after welding, I need to be able to open this tool up so the welded blade can stay, to the, stay on the hub. So I show this by being able to have a two-piece tool where I open the tool, I can insert a new blade, and I can extract the old one. That's a very difficult a tooling problem to solve. In doing so, I also need to be able to hold on to these collar datums that have very tight tolerances. Again, it can only be a fraction of the true position that I'm trying to achieve. And I need to be able to hold them in this pocket because I'm holding, holding on to the collar. The collar also has to have very tight tolerances. And we need a way to make sure that the datums on the tooling are hitting the datums on the part. While I'm doing all this oscillation, this is a very violent action, I need to make sure that there's no part movement in here that will cause tooling wear. So tooling wear will cause uh, a low tooling life uh, and, and hurt us in when we're trying to achieve this tight tolerance. So we have tools that have lasted over 30,000 welds with just a fraction of this from a wear perspective, which allows us to iterate on the material that we need to use in order to be able to balance those tolerances. I also need to be able to apply enough clamp force to this to keep the blade stationary so when I'm oscillating this tool doesn't open and close with the process forces that I might be experiencing. I need to be, have enough clamp force to overcome that and I need to make sure that the tool's not deflecting uh, either in an opening direction or in the upward direction or the downward direction while trying to minimize the amount of mass that I use. We machine this out like a, like a piece of Swiss cheese in order to minimize that mass so that we can maximize the machine performance. All of these are very difficult tooling challenges that we have to overcome on the blade side. On the hub side of the tooling, we also have many considerations uh, in order to be able to achieve uh, this tolerance. The first one is the part itself. We have a compound angle, which is a combination of the stagger angle of the blade and the height angle of the disc. We have to neutralize both of those angles so that we can oscillate in an up and down motion and have everything square uh, to each other. Once we make the weld, remember that we're, we're, we're welding a blade onto each one of these uh, stubs, we have to be able to index around to the next weld location. And we wanna make sure that that indexing motion is very precise so that we end up in a spot where we're not chewing away uh, at this tolerance that we need to achieve. So that indexing precision needs to be within a few arc seconds to make sure that we're in the right spot. And then we have to verify that the blade tool and the hub tool are aligned to each other after that motion. Now remember, we're doing all this uh, and we're oscillating with friction force that might exceed 80,000 pounds. We have forge force that's going in this direction uh, that can be up to 150,000 pounds. Uh, and we gotta make sure that we're not getting tool deflection on the hub side either. Right, so tool deflection might be the part deflecting back this way, uh, it might be lifting off of the table itself, 
Uh, any deflection that we see in the tool or the part as a result of the process forces, again, is going to chew away at this tolerance. Now, this tooling all sits on the bed of the machine, uh, and the machine itself can't deflect either. So we have to design the machine frame to be able to accept the tooling, but also withstand the process forces without deflection. Again, any machine deflection is going to chew away uh, at our ability to achieve that tolerance. And then the last thing is, as we move from welding this blist to another blist, we have to be able to change the tooling, get it on and off of the machine repeatedly, so that you don't have a tolerance associated with, with tool change that's going to eat away at this uh, welding tolerance. So that part is also critical. These are all the tooling challenges that we have associated with welding bliss with a really tight, true positional tolerance uh, in linear friction welding. Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on this topic or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.